Honorable Rajkumar Khampurta, Parliamentary Secretary, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Education, Human Resources, Tertiary Education and Scientific Research, Mr. Duva Pantaya, Chairperson of the Open University of Mauritius and Board Members, Professor Ashra Singh Kanwal, President and CEO of the Commonwealth of Learning, Dr. Kaviraj Sukhu, Director General of the Open University of Mauritius, members of the staff of the Open University of Mauritius, graduates, distinguished guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be amongst you for this seventh convocation ceremony of the Open University of Mauritius. Today happens to be a major milestone in the lives of our graduates, no doubt, but it is also a watershed day for the Open University in that the recipient of the Honoris Causa Doctorate is none other than Professor Asha Kanwar, President and CEO of the Commonwealth of Learning. Warm welcome to you, Professor Kanwar, both on my ministries and my own name. Ladies and gentlemen, as already stated by Professor Kanwal, the Association of Mauritius and the Ministry of Education, with COL, goes back a long way. Illustratively, COL's lifelong learning for farmers, that is the L33F initiative, has greatly helped the Ministry of Ag Agriculture in Mauritius. The FARE, operating under the aegis of that ministry, has worked closely with COL, and thanks to that partnership, it has been able to significantly affect its capacity building in e-learning through the use of multimedia-based open distance learning materials and also through different delivery modes. As for the relationship between COL and the Open University, that is also a special one. COL has provided invaluable help to the Open University by way of its programs, which have gone a long way towards ensuring the establishment of that university on a firm basis. It has also greatly helped the Open University in online content development and the acquisition of research skills in open distance learning. Moreover, the Commonwealth of Learning has also extended appreciable help within the ambit of the Virtual University for Small States of the Commonwealth Project. The story does not end there, for the Commonwealth of Learning has done even more for Mauritius. In the recent past, my ministry hosted the Africa Regional Consultation on Open Education Resources, organized by the Commonwealth of Learning in March 2017, and Mauritius also participated in the second OER World Congress in Ljubljana, Slovenia, in September 2017. In fact, I find it absolutely fitting that we should be speaking of the OER here at the Open University that thrives on online learning. We should also know that open educational resources lead to increased access to educational resources, resulting in a further democratization process of education while simultaneously bringing a reduction in the cost of curricular materials. We are indeed very grateful to COL, which is assisting us in coming up with an open educational resources policy for Mauritius, a policy very much aligned to the SDG4, that is, ensuring inclusive and equitable education. Madam President, do transmit our warm appreciation to the Chair and Governors of the Call Board. Dear graduates, a few years ago, either each of you had made a firm decision to pursue a graduate or postgraduate degree course at the Open University. There were indeed moments of hope, joy, pride, but at times, even moments of difficulties, pressure, and even hurdles, but you braved it all. And today, you are here. You are gathered here to celebrate your success, 
treasure this special moment. However, remember that in an era of lifelong learning, you may not have reached the end of the journey. It is just the beginning of a new one. I would encourage you to maintain the same spirit you have shown and to be ready to face the challenges in life just as you've done till now, especially as you will be embarking on your professional life with more and more acquired knowledge and skills. I wish you all plenty of success in your professional life. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed the importance that higher education plays in a person's life, and yet today we are often told that higher education is at the crossroads. Everywhere in the world, discussions are ongoing as to how to make higher education more effective. Indeed, higher education cannot stay high without continual innovation. It is also true that the role of higher education cannot be limited merely to educating the youth to become professional men and women useful to the society, important as this is. But I believe that there should be insistence on certain perennial concerns like character training, the sharpening of intellectual skills, and the refining of sensibility. Dear graduates, you are emerging from this convocation as individuals proud of your achievements, but hopefully you will retain humility. One of the lessons we learn out of getting to be highly educated is the vital significance of being humble. Never let greatness get to your heads. Yes, you're supposed to maintain high your work ethics, but you must also learn to work as a team member. The world out there that you will be plunging into will have major expectations of you. Are you flexible? Are you adaptable? Do you have the capacity to engage with people from diverse backgrounds? Can you unfurl your soft skills alongside your hard ones? Do you have a high emotional intelligence? As importantly, do you believe in yourself, in your capabilities? And finally, can you operate in a global context as a global citizen? These are the new demands that will be made of you. The answers lie with you. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me now to have a few words for your alma mater. I understand that Open University is in the process of reviewing its curriculum and processes after five years of operations. This is certainly a laudable initiative in that we would like the program of studies offered by the public TEIs to remain relevant and up the mark. I also understand that Open University is developing programs in fintech, artificial intelligence, and cybersecurity, thereby demonstrating its dynamism with a clear understanding of the developmental needs of Mauritius. Let me now challenge you as a provider of higher education of quality. I would like you to become one of the best institutions operating on a mixed mode. I know that UNISA is currently ruling the roost with its 350,000 learners. I won't insist on such a massive number, at least not just yet. Remember, you have the potential to attract a number of international students. As you're aware, the Higher Education Directorate of my ministry is working on strategies to its attracting international students to Mauritius. Let me share with you that recently, the Economic Development Board, in collaboration with the Directorate, was in Tanzania and Kenya in education fairs, where there was a huge interest from the students to come and study in Mauritius. So the onus is now on you to contribute towards making of Mauritius an education hub for the region and even beyond. My ministry is doing its fair share. The Higher Education Act that we came up with in 2017 provides for a better regulation of the higher education sector. The provisions of the Act, indeed, 
seek to make the higher education system in Mauritius a modern and innovative one. The present regulatory body, the Tertiary Education Commission, will make the way to two distinct bodies, namely the Higher Education Commission and the Quality Assurance Authority. Moreover, the Higher Education Act makes reference to an innovative funding mechanism for allocating grants to the higher education institutions based on performance. This, you will realize, has become more important in the wake of the recent decision of government to provide free education for undergraduate studies in public TIs as a means to inter alia boost national productivity and act as a catalyst in elevating the country to a high income economy. Also, bear in mind that the higher education landscape will also be undergoing changes with more and more focus on the, on the aspect of relevance linked to the rationalization of teaching programs in public higher education institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, graduates, I will end on this note. Congratulations to all of you, the graduates as well as the Open University of Mauritius. A convocation ceremony is a time when we don our gowns and caps ready to fling the latter into the air. That's establishing firmly the cultural and ritualistic dimension. But a convocation is also the time when we authenticate the words of Matthew Arnold, the famous Victorian poet and critic who referred to a university as a place that gathers and safeguards, I quote, the best that has been thought and said, unquote. Let me therefore hope that the Open University of Mauritius has given you plenty to cherish and preserve. I wish all the very best. Once again, congratulations to all graduates and to you, Professor Cameron. Thank you for your kind attention.